What is up people, my name is Teja and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create and deploy a WordPress website on AWS platform. You can actually deploy a WordPress website in just one click of a button using AWS Light Sale. So you basically have to create an instance and then you have to just select WordPress and click on install and that will just install and configure the WordPress for you. But we're not going to follow this method because we're going to do it in the traditional way. We're going to install and configure all the necessary elements and we're going to put all the pieces together in order to finally host a website from cloud. And by doing so, you also get to learn new things, which is kind of the whole point of this video. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to rent a virtual computer on the AWS platform. And on this virtual computer, we're going to install a software known as a web server. A web server is basically a software that handles HTTP requests and serves the appropriate HTTP responses. So when you're trying to access a website from your browser, your browser actually sends a HTTP request to the server of that website. And on the server, there is a web server software running that will take your HTTP request, it will process it, and it will respond back with the appropriate response. So in this video, we're going to use a web server named Apache. So we're going to first create a virtual computer and then we're going to install Apache and obviously we'll also need a database. So we'll also install a DBMS uh, on our virtual computer and this is going to be MySQL which is a very popular relational database management system. And once we're done with it, we're going to install WordPress. Now WordPress is a very popular content management system which is written in PHP. Nothing but a software really that is written in PHP and you can basically install it on your web server and you can create a website from this installation and you can customize your website for the most part you don't need to write any code to create a website with wordpress but if you want to bring more functionality to your website you can write code that's about it and once we have installed wordpress the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a domain name to our website so that whenever a user goes to your domain name they will be taken to the website that you are creating and deploying on aws and finally we are also going to give it an ssl certificate so that your website will be secure with the https protocol so without further ado let's get started all right so here i am on the aws management console if you don't know how to create or set up your aws account i've already made a video on it you will find it somewhere here in the suggested cards or you can also find it in the description below so go watch that video first if you're wondering how to create and set up your aws account and first of all i'll be creating a virtual computer and this i can do with the aws ec2 platform so I'll click on AWS EC2 and this will take me to the EC2 dashboard. Over here, I'll go ahead and click on launch instance and I'll name my instance as my WordPress server. Next up, I have to choose the operating system that I want to run in my virtual computer. I will choose Ubuntu and the instance type. I'm not going to change this. I'm going to let it be t2.micro, which has one virtual CPU and one gig of memory. That should be enough for now. And the next step is to create a key pair so that if you want to log into your instance, if you want to log into your virtual computer, you can make use of this key pair and log in to your computer via SSH. So I'm going to click on create new key pair and I'll give my key pair a name. I'll say WordPress server, WordPress underscore server. And I let the key pair type be RSA, the private key file format as .pem. And when I click on create pair, that's going to download my private key. Now, make sure that you keep this private key very safe with you because if anyone else has access to it, they can connect and log into your virtual computer. We don't want that happening. So keep that secure. So the next step is to configure your network settings. Make sure that you enable both these options. Allow HTTPS traffic and also allow HTTP traffic. So finally, you can also configure your storage. I'm going to let it be the default, which is one eight gigabyte uh, general purpose SSD storage. And finally, I'll click on launch instance and that's going to create my virtual computer for me on the cloud. So once the instance is created, I can now go ahead and connect to it. But before connecting to it, I need to first assign it an elastic IP address. The reason we want to assign an elastic IP to this instance is because if I were to reboot this instance, if I right click and select reboot instance, my public IPv4 address is going to change every time I reboot this virtual computer. But we don't want that to happen. We want the IP address to be static so that people know that this is where my website is hosted 
or in other words the DNS server will know that this is where my website is hosted so we want to make sure that this IP address is constant so I'll go to EC2 dashboard and I'll click on elastic IPs and I'll select allocate elastic IP address and allocate so we have now created an elastic IP address and the next step is to actually assign it to the created virtual computer so just select the elastic IP address that you created go to actions and click on associate elastic IP address and over here you can go ahead click on choose an instance and this is the instance that I just created so I will choose it and then I'll click on associate all right so my elastic IP address is now associated with my virtual computer so I'll go back to EC2 dashboard and I'll go back to my instances and you can see now that my public IPv4 address changed to the newly created elastic IP address so I can now connect or access my instance through this public IPv4 address. So we will now go ahead and connect to it via SSH. So in order to connect to your instance via SSH, you will need an SSH client. If you are on Linux, you can just go ahead and use the command line SSH utility. But since I'm on Windows, I will need a separate SSH client. And in this video, I'll be using Mobile Xterm. You can just go ahead and use whatever SSH client you like, but I'll be using Mobile Xterm. So I'll click on session, I'll click on SSH, and in the remote host, I need to enter my public IPv4 address. So I'll just copy this and I'll come back here. I'll enter it here. And now I'll also specify the username, but I don't know the username yet. In order to know the username, I can just right click on my instance and click on uh, connect. And if I go to the SSH client here, you can see in this SSH uh, command, it shows me that my username is Ubuntu. So I'll just put my username as Ubuntu. Finally, I'll go to advanced SSH settings and I'll use my private key to log in. So I'll select this box and I'll browse to my private key that I downloaded and I'll finally click on OK. And that should connect me to my virtual computer that I just created, my instance. So this is my computer. I'm now able to access it. So now we are done with the first step, which is creating the virtual computer on AWS EC2. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll install Apache web server on my instance. And I'll do that by saying sudo apt install Apache2. Done. The web server is now installed. And in order to cross check whether my web server is actually working or not, if I go to a new tab and type in HTTP colon slash slash followed by my public IP address. And if I hit enter, this shows me an Apache 2 default page like this. And if you see a page like this, it means that your web server is up and running. It has installed successfully. Okay, but that's not it. We also need to install PHP runtime on our instance because WordPress is built on PHP. So I'll go ahead and install the PHP runtime and the MySQL connector for PHP. And by the way, all these commands that I'm executing right now on my screen will be in the description below. So don't worry about it. And I also need to install MySQL server for the database. So I'll just go ahead and type in sudo apt install MySQL server to install it. Okay, so now we have also installed the MySQL server. And before going to the next step, there's one small configuration that you need to do on your MySQL server. So you basically have to change your MySQL authentication plugin to a MySQL native password so that we can log in to the MySQL server with a normal password. And that is what is required in order to install WordPress. So in order to do that, first I will log in to my MySQL prompt with root user. And there you go, I'm now inside my MySQL prompt. And in order to change my authentication plugin, I'll just type in alter user root at the rate localhost identified with MySQL native password by followed by the password that I want to use for my root account for MySQL. And I'll use a password like test password at the rate one, two, three, but make sure that you don't use a password like this, which is easy to guess. I'm only using this password for the sake of this demonstration. Do not use a weak password like this. Use a strong password that is harder to guess. So if I hit enter, there you go. The query has executed. And I also want to create a new separate user other than root in order to use with my WordPress. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll say create user and I'll name the user as WP underscore user at the rate localhost identified by followed by the password that I want to use. And I'll use the same password, test password at the rate one, two, three here. And there you go, I have now created a new user. Fine, and we also need a separate database to use with WordPress. So I'll create a new database by saying create database, and then I'll name the database as WP, short for WordPress. And now I'll assign all the privileges on this database 
to this user so i'll do that by saying grant all privileges on wp dot star to wp underscore user at the rate localhost and that's it we are done configuring the mysql server i'll hold ctrl d on my keyboard to come out of the mysql prompt and now we can go ahead and actually install wordpress so first of all i'll come to my temp directory we go to wordpress dot org i'll click on get wordpress download and install and i'll copy the download link of this dot tar dot gz file and i'll come back to my terminal and i'll use wget to download this file so if i say ls this is the file that i downloaded and i can just unzip it by saying tar space xvf followed by the name of the archive so if i type ls again there is a new folder called wordpress and we need to move this folder to the document root of apache so i'll go ahead and say sudo mv i'll move wordpress to slash var slash www slash html so if i just go to var www html i will find wordpress in that path so i'll go back to my browser now and i'll go to my ip address followed by slash wordpress because that is where we have stored our wordpress files so if I hit enter, that should take me to the WordPress installation screen like this. So from here, I can install WordPress. I'll click on let's go. And on this screen, I need to configure my database. So the database name is going to be WP. The username is going to be WP underscore user. The password is going to be test password at the rate one to three. The database host will be localhost and the table prefix, I can just leave it to WP underscore. It doesn't matter. So I'll click on submit and hey, it threw us an error and it says it is unable to write to wp-config.php file. But there's no need to worry because we can just fix it by copying all this code and go back to your terminal and go to the WordPress directory. And over here, I will create a new file called wp-config.php. And I'll just paste all that code here and I'll save it. Now I'll come back to my browser and I'll click on run the installation. And there you go, that error is resolved now. So here I can give my site a name. I'll name it as my sample website. And I'll give the username as my name. And I'll set the password as test password. Once again, use a strong password. Do not use a password like this. This is just for demonstration. And finally, install WordPress. Cool, WordPress is now installed. And if I click on login, that will take me to my admin login page like this. So if I now go to my IP address followed by slash WordPress, that should show me my website. This is my WordPress website. Obviously it doesn't have any content because I have not added any content yet. I can obviously customize it all I want by logging into my WordPress dashboard. But this is how the sample WordPress website will look like. But I'm not going to actually show you how to customize it because that's just not the point of this video. Anyway, there's one thing that I want to fix and that is I don't want to go to a sub path like WordPress like this. I want my WordPress website to be served on the root directory like this but as of now the root path or the root directory serves the apache 2 default page but i want my wordpress website to be served at this root path of my website and in order to do that i need to modify my apache configuration so i'll go back to my terminal and i'll go to cd etc apache 2 sites available and over here you'll find a file that says 000 default.conf this is the configuration file that we need to edit so i'll open up this with nano editor and over here I need to change this document root to slash var slash www slash html slash wordpress and that's it I will just save this oh it says that permission denied I think I have to open it up with sudo so let me open it up with sudo and done so now I'll just say systemctl restart apache 2 to restart apache and done so now if i go back and if i refresh this page there you go that actually worked all right so now is the time to actually link a domain to our website and in order to do that you obviously need a domain name and you can get yourself a domain name for free of cost from various services that are available on the internet but for me i have actually purchased a domain called mysamplewebsite.online and i'm going to link this domain name to my wordpress website that i just created so in order to do that just go to your uh, instances and copy your public IPv4 address and then come to your domain's DNS settings and you need to add a A type record which points to your public IPv4 address and you can set the TTL to 60 
and just click on add record and this is going to add a a type record to your dns settings oh and also there's one more thing you want to modify in your configuration you want to add two new fields the first one is going to be server name which is going to be your domain name in my case it's my sample website dot online and the second one is server alias which is going to be www dot my sample website dot online just making sure that i spelled it correctly yep i'm going to save this and i'll restart apache cool now we just have to wait for the dns changes to propagate okay so after around 10 to 15 minutes my domain name is finally pointing to my aws instance and now i can access my wordpress website with my domain name so i'm going to first log into my wp admin and you can see that I'm actually redirected to my public IPv4 address instead of my domain now. And we're going to fix that. So I'm going to log into my WordPress dashboard. I'll go to settings, general. And over here, I'm going to change this WordPress address to my sample website dot online. And I'm just going to copy paste the same thing to site address as well. And I'll just save these changes. So now you can see that my website is actually pointed to my sample website dot online, which is my domain. So there's just one last thing that is left to do. And that is to make our website work over HTTPS to make it secure. And we'll be doing that by using a tool named Certbot. So I'll first go ahead and install this tool but it says certbot has no installation candidate. So if you get an error like this too, you just have to update your repository and you can do that by saying sudo apt get update. And once the update is done, just run that command again. And there you go, it's now installing and it's done installing. So I'll now go ahead and run this tool by saying sudo certbot dash dash apache. That's for an email address. I'm going to type in my email, agree to the terms and service. And now it asks me which names would I like to activate HTTPS for. So there are two domains. The first one is the domain without any subdomain. And the second one is the www subdomain. So I want to activate HTTPS for both these names. So I'll just leave this as blank and just hit enter. All right. So as it says, it has successfully deployed certificates for both my sample website dot online and www.mysamplewebsite.online. So if I go to mysamplewebsite.online, I should now be able to connect to it over HTTPS. Let's see. And there you go. You can see that my website is now accessible over a secure connection over HTTPS. And it has also got a certificate from Let's Encrypt. Awesome. So that'll be it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also do comment in the comment section. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.